friends, so last week I flew over two Great Lakes, first Lake Erie and then Lake Michigan, which is particularly dear to me because I spent four years living on its western coast. And there's this really lovely moment where as you're looking out your window, you can't see either edge of it, not even from 30,000 feet. So for about 90 seconds, it might as well be an ocean. And it reminded me of this art exhibit at my college campus where this artist, Kevin Miyazaki, drove all the way around the whole perimeter of Lake Michigan, taking identical pictures of the horizon line along the way. Each photo looked entirely different. The water could be blue, or like a turbulent black, or shimmery green, or a gray that was indistinguishable from the sky. The way the lake could look was always changing, and it was beautiful. The art had been commissioned by a professor of mine who taught a class called Philosophy of Art that gave me so much help. He asked these big jerk-off philosophical questions like, what is art? And how do we know what counts as art? And who decides? Fine, but I could not stand to read another essay by a dead, rich, white guy philosopher who tried to answer the question by writing another 40 pages about Marcel Duchamp and his goddamn urinal. So I talked about it. I talked about how I didn't think that it was fair that something gets called art just because somebody decided to put it in a dusty old museum, and that the group of people who make these decisions, the art world, was in no way revolutionized because some dude got a urinal into an art show not when the world they've created still shuts so many people out. But every time I contributed to the class discussion, I felt like he pushed me more, picked apart my ideas more. I felt like he had it out for me, so it came back harder. I ended up writing my term paper on graffiti culture, the title of which could have been F your art world. And what I love about graffiti is the people who are at the top of the game of the art outside museums look a lot different than the people whose paintings hang inside. There's no barrier to entry to look at it, and there's a way lower barrier to make it too. It's not so pretentious about itself. It's just there in the street. No one can buy it, no one can pay for it, and in a couple of days it could be gone. One day there's these beautiful bright colors saturated blues and greens and blacks. And the next, the wall gets painted over in a clinical gray, indistinguishable from the sky. It's always changing, and it's beautiful. That professor gave me an A, by the way. And shortly after, that series of photos showed up on campus. Photos of Lake Michigan with a dusty old art museum that I happen to love hanging over its shoreline. And I knew he was on my side. So in the comments, tell me about your favorite lake or your favorite art or your favorite teachers. If you liked this video, you can subscribe if you're so inclined. You can also find me on all my social medias in the links below. And I will see you next week. Bye.